Hello and welcome back to another Classic WoW video. So today we will cover a couple of overhyped items and failed investments in Classic WoW, so hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes, and maybe we can find a pattern between which items are overhyped, and which items we expect to rise in value, but actually went down in value instead. Because if we can find a pattern, then maybe we can learn from our mistakes and make smarter investments in the future. So in this video we will go through a couple of items that I have personally invested in and that has backfired for me, as well as a couple of items that has backfired in general. I'll be using my server aka Firemore Europe as a reference when it comes to prices for these items, and even though prices may vary from server to server, I think whether they have made profit or flopped will be the same for pretty much every server out there. So first off we have the big category of items that I have invested in which is Twink items. Now I haven't put a lot of gold into this but I have bought at least one of each item and several of a couple of items to try and sell them. And for me in most cases it doesn't bother me too much if I don't make a profit since I am planning on making and gearing my own level 19 Twink character so I'll be using my Shadow Fang and Assassin's Blade instead of selling them. But with that being said, let's just go through the items. First off, we have Shadow Fang, and when I bought this, I bought it for exactly 100 gold, which was considered a very low amount, and I thought it would skyrocket in Phase 2 or Phase 3, or whenever people got bored of max level content, which seemingly hasn't happened yet, since this weapon remains around the same value, and may even have gone down a bit in value. The Assassin's Blade, this one I bought for 150 gold once my Hunter was roughly level 50, which was about one week into Classic. This was by far the cheapest one at that time, and the others were on the auction house for between 300 and 500 gold, which was the value I expected this blade to reach in a month or two, once people had some spare gold and had bought their epic mounts. We also have Feet of the Lynx. I bought these boots for between 10 and 20 gold each, also in the first weeks of Classic WoW, because I thought they would go up in price once people were past their leveling process, and I thought the influx of those items would be way higher at the launch of Classic WoW, and that the demand would be higher later on. I expected these to hit a minimum of 30 gold each before phase 3, but that obviously did not happen, and as you can see, considering I bought these items for 10 and 20 gold each, I lost quite a bit of money on these. I bought 8 of these in total, so I didn't lose that much gold, but it still sucks. We also have the Sentry Cloak. Similar to Feet of the Lynx, I bought these for between 10 and 20 gold each, but I only bought 4 of them. I did invest in quite a few more Twink items, but most of them were weapons where I either made my gold back, or actually ended up making a profit. For example, I bought the Twisted Chanter's Staff for exactly the amount of gold it sells for now. And I also bought Staff of the Blessed Seer for 30 gold, which I've now seen being sold for way more than that so I did end up making some profit on Twink items as well. However, after talking to a couple of fellow investors, they still think that Twink items might see an uptrend in value and demand later in Classic, once there is a big content drought or once everything's been cleared, so maybe after Blackwing Lair, if there's a long enough break in between Phase 3 and Phase 4, or after Phase 6 has been finished. But if Twink items don't become popular until that late in Classic, the supply will be absolutely massive. So I wouldn't count on making too much profit on these items. Now for me, since I am planning on leveling and gearing my own level 19 rogue, I can use the Shadow Fang and the Assassin's Blade, as well as one Feet of the Lynx and one Sentry Cloak myself, which again minimalizes the gold I lost on these investments. Next up, let's talk about a couple of materials, since that's the category I think most people are investing in, since materials are used by pretty much everyone in Classic, as they're used for pretty much every profession out there. Now the first item that comes to mind here that should have been obvious that it would go down in value, but I and a few others just didn't think about this in advance, is Felicloth. 
This was worth about 9 gold each in the first 2 months of Classic WoW on my server, and even though I didn't buy them myself, I still count them as an investment because I did go out there and farm them. I think at one point I was sitting on 50 fell cloth, now I only have about 10 left and I have been gradually selling them off after I saw their downtrend in value. So the first couple of months when I was farming them, they were worth 9 gold each, and now they're sitting between 1 and 2 gold each, which is a huge difference in value. But it's also understandable, because more people are farming Dire Maw now, whether this is hunters doing tribute, or mages doing lashers, or rogues hunting for treasure chests, all of those classes can also solo the satyrs in there, they can drop felcloth as well, which is what many people have chosen to do to acquire some additional gold while they're farming stuff inside Dire Maul. The change in price of felcloth will also affect items like Mooncloth and anything where felcloth is used as a reagent, so I'm not gonna cover items crafted by using felcloth since it's obvious why they have gone down in value as well. Next up is Devil Sword Leather. So me, myself, as well as quite a few private server players were expecting some huge Mafia action on these and were expecting Devil's or Leather to stay at a pretty consistent 10 gold per piece throughout all of Classic, and maybe even go up in price as well once people start accumulating more gold, and once people start leveling alts because Devil's or Leather armor is perfect to throw on a fresh level 60 character that needs attack power. But no, you see, Blizzard actually went against their hashtag no changes policy and upped the spawn timers on Devil Sores. And the price is now just a fraction of what it used to be. When I farmed Devil Sores on my server at launch, the Devil Sword leathers were 14 gold per piece, and now they're sitting at 3 gold per piece, which is a massive, a huge difference in price, and it just sucks. Next up, we have the Essence of Undeath. Now this is an item that may not have gone down that much in value in terms of the amount of gold, but if we look at it percentage wise it has dropped by quite a bit. The first month of classic this item was sitting at 4-5 to five gold each on most realms, and since around late September to early October it's just been going down and down and down. Obviously it was inflated with very high prices early on because not a lot of people are that high level that fast, but even throughout the entirety of October this item was sitting at 2 gold each, and now it's down to roughly 1 gold each which is a shame really. Now this item was supposed to go up in value because of Robe of the Void and Robe of the Winter Night, both of which being great robes for warlocks, but also because of it being used to craft felcloth gloves. And since Felcloth is so easy to farm, the Essence of Undeath would pretty much be the only difficult to acquire material for this craft. Now when it comes to the Essence of Undeath, I think we might see a potential uptrend in value when Ankiraj comes out because of the Shadow Power Glove Enchant, but that remains to be seen and it's just pure speculation. As for other items that were potentially failed investments, it's pretty much every single Dark Moon Fair item out there. These items truly hit their peak the week of the announcement of Dark Moon Fair. Some of the items reached three times their normal value due to insane overhyping of the items themselves, and a month later the items were down to lower than their initial value, as so many people lost gold on this trying to join in on the investments. But for those who invested early enough and sold during peak time, they made tons of gold. As for everything when it comes to investing, it's all about buying and selling at the right time, and you'll pretty much always make profit. But the line between profit and loss is so thin, and if you wait a couple of days or a week too long, you can get screwed. It's also a bit RNG dependent, because at any moment Blizzard might come out with a blue post, where they announce something that makes the price of something either skyrocket or plummet to the earth. For example, when they announced the Dire Mall release date, Felcloth immediately started going down in value because people knew Dire Mall would bring in so much supply of Felcloth. And when Blizzard announced the Dark Moon Fair, those items went up to the heaven in value. As a last piece of just general items to avoid investing in, and that has also gone down in value after the release of Dire Maul, it's every single herb that dropped from the Lashers inside Dire Maul. You see, mages and priests and pretty much every class with AoE abilities can farm these Lashers, 
and obtain many herbs without having to go out in the open world and farm them. This makes farming these herbs out in the open world less valuable, and it also makes the herbs themselves less valuable, since they are more easily obtainable. So if you invest in them before Dire Maul, which I don't think many people did, well, too bad for you. But I would also suggest you don't invest too much in them either. And there are some herbs that you may be able to flip for profit if you make certain potions or elixirs that are useful to levelers or twinks, but that is very service specific, so the only advice I can give you there is to check the prices for certain low level herbs and potions and elixirs on your server and see if there's any potential flips you can do. So when it comes to which items to avoid investing in for now and for the future, I think one pattern we see here is that the supply of most items actually beats the demand. And because of mages being able to sell dungeon boosts and make over 100 gold per hour, the prices of everything that's valuable just keeps increasing as well. And when it comes to overhyped items, we can see that this is mostly tied to new content in Classic, and it is also tied to Blizzard announcing new content. Like the Darkmoon Fair and Dire Maul, but also Blackwing Lair, which spiked the prices of quite some items needed there as well. I think one key note to take away from this is that when Blizzard announces something new, prices seem to skyrocket for a week or two, then go down before the content actually comes out, so try to avoid investing during those hype weeks. It's also a good idea to check out which patterns and recipes becomes available in what phase so you can prepare yourself and start grinding for those materials now instead of panicking when that content is announced. If you want help with this, I have made a Phase 4 investment video where I cover items to invest in for Phase 4, and I will do the same for Phase 5 and Phase 6 as well in the future. If you want to chat with me or anyone in my community about investing, you should definitely join my Discord channel with over 400 people all interested in Classic WoW. The link to that is in the description below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up as that really helps me out and it shows me which type of content you guys enjoy watching. If you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to my channel and click that bell button and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.